Hello, fellow English teachers. Want to really help your English students speak more easily, more automatically in the present and in the past tenses? Why not try this low preparation flashcard game? It focuses on keywords commonly associated with four verb tenses. Keywords such as these. In fact, over 40 keywords commonly used in present and past tenses will be presented in this game. It's called Just Do It after the Nike slogan. It's a timed flashcard game where students get faster and faster with practice. They compete against themselves or against another group. By the end of this game, your students will have successfully constructed over 40 complete sentences automatically and in under three minutes. They're sure to feel like a winner, no matter what their level. So set aside that irregular verb chart for now and concentrate on one verb, do, did, done. So here's the verb to do it, conjugated in four tenses, using first person singular and affirmative voice. We want to keep it simple in order to practice speaking automatically. In later lessons, you can use the same flashcards to practice conjugating negatives and questions and other irregular verbs. But that's not our goal today. The flashcard game sounds like this. I always do it. I'm doing it this week. I did it last week. I've already done it. Not only do the students learn to use the correct verb tense with each of the 41 keywords, they learn word order. Before you begin presenting the game, give them this handy one-page cheat sheet. Students will make their own flashcards from this table, one tense at a time, keyword on one side and the answer conjugated on the flip side. There's a link to download the cheat sheet on the last slide, or design a colorful infographic of your own to hand out. Point out the list of keywords for present simple. Look how many there are. We use this tense a lot. Help your students to see the simple idea of habits with each keyword. Lower levels may have to translate in order to get the picture. Now associate the present simple phrase, I do it, with the idea of habits or routines and point out the word order. You may need to draw a chart on the board like this one to depict the frequency of habits and routines from 0% of the time to 100% of the time. Or pull out one of your favorite graphics like a bar chart so students can visualize better. Give your students plenty of time to make their flashcards. Upper levels will probably prefer to have an already prepared set of cards, but lower levels appreciate making a set that they can keep. You can find a link for the prepared set of flashcards ready to print on the last slide. Students will need ample time to practice going through the flashcards before moving on to the next tense. This practice time will probably go quickly with upper level students. Be careful not to bore them. They prefer to be challenged. Now that your students feel good about the present simple, introduce the present continuous with the straightforward idea that it's different from routine, whereas present simple is all about routine. Word order in present continuous is not so easy especially the keyword still. Help your students to see how routine and repetitive present simple is compared to present continuous. In present simple, it's over and over, so boring. But present continuous is all about new and different. Help your students to see that today is not every day. Today is different. Now shuffle the cards for the two present tenses and let the students practice. When your students have a good grasp for the present, move on to simple past. 
If anyone makes a statement in the simple past, such as I did it, my ear is waiting to hear when. I need a date. I want to fix that event or action on the timeline in my head. It's all about chronological order. The key words with when I was are often indicators of the simple past. Point out to your adult students that they are not in school at the moment and that they are probably not on holiday either. These periods in the past are not associated with our present situation. Very important idea. Remember keywords with every are associated with routine. Keywords with this are associated with the present continuous. Keywords with last are definitely used in the simple past. Last year is not every year and not this year. Simple past is history. The keyword yesterday is not connected to today. Last month is not this month and in 2010 is not this year. Allow a little practice time for simple past, but most students get it quickly. Now shuffle all the cards and try three tenses. Now we're moving on to the present perfect. Here word order is more complicated because we're introducing questions and negative forms. The simple idea here is my life up to today. We generally say that there are three ways to use the present perfect. My life in general, but remember no dates, no details. The second is since and for, the easiest idea for most students. And then the third is just or recently. Get your students, your students to see the connection to the present. We often ask a general question in present perfect to begin a conversation. Have you ever? The understood message is in your life. No dates. In this insightful text there are no precise dates. No reference to when in my life. This is an excellent example of present perfect at its purest. The idea of since and for is that the action began in the past and is still true today. This is probably the easiest context for learners. I have just done it means recently. Whether it's five minutes ago or yesterday, it's not important. Recently is good enough. After you've given the students time to pra practice the present perfect keywords, mix them up with the simple past keywords. They will be slower and less sure of the difference between the two past tenses. When you see them fumbling, gently ask them, is that a date? Or can we add the phrase in my life in general? Here's a tip. Some students remember spatially, so you could create a title card for each tense and students could place each keyword in its proper column, like this. Students should aim to be under three minutes time when, doing, when going through all 41 cards. Time yourself so more advanced students can try to beat your time. You can read the in-depth blog Number One Fluency Hack on my website businessenglishallure.com. You'll learn how the idea for the game came about and how it was perfected. There's more helpful tips on teaching these four tenses as well. You can download the printable flashcards, the cheat sheet, and a PDF of the article just by signing up for the newsletter. Here's a little about myself and my passion for teaching and now blogging. Through my 25-year career teaching adults business English in France, I've learned that having fun in class with games promotes learning, recall, and engagement. So remember to have fun. Thanks to Damon Nofar for his advice on letting go of PowerPoint templates and designing your own. 
and to CompellingTV.com for his help in script writing for YouTube videos and his tips on how to get your first video out there. Hope to see you soon on my website, businessenglishallure.com.